Hey, what's up, everyone? My name is Jeremy Siskin. I am the author of this fantastic book uh, called Playing Solo Jazz Piano. Look, there's a paper copy, too. Uh, you can get it at jeremysiskin.com. And today, I want to talk about keys to jazz in 3-4. The word keys is kind of a pun. I'll tell you why in a second. Um, but the story of this is that I, I've been recording an album recently, and there's all these pieces in 3-4. And the longer I do it, the more I'm like, man, I don't have a clue. So I've been thinking about what I've learned over the years about playing in 3-4. Um, you guys know this song is Waltz for Debbie. I'll just play it a little bit for you, and then we'll talk. Jazz, especially Latin jazz, we use this word clave. Um, this is a Spanish word that means key. And the clave is supposed to be the rhythmic key of the piece. Like if you understand the clave, then you understand the basis of the rhythm. And you guys might know that there's these kind of two sticks in uh, especially Afro-Cuban jazz that often they're called the claves and they're often playing the clave pattern. They're very high and piercing. And probably the most common clave is the 2-3 or the 3-2. Um, and Really good Latin jazz musicians can kind of listen to something and instantly tell you whether something's in a 2-3 or a 3-2 clave, and it's just crucial to the way that the rhythm fits together. I'm not that good, but I do know, um, usually I'm taught that the 2-3 the clave is like this, 2-3-4-1. So this is like a huge part of the Latin, especially the Cuban salsa jazz tradition. Um, now, when I took a, a lesson uh, with my teacher, Fred Hirsch, about 3-4, he said, you have to know what 3-4 clave you're in. And, um, you know, it's kind of a non-traditional word use of the word clave, but it still refers to kind of a rhythmic key. Um, what is the underlying rhythm that you're dealing with? And I don't think you have to be in just one clave in 3-4. I think that there's a lot of room for mixing, nuance, placing accents different places, making kind of larger phrases. Um, but I wanted to show you some things that I think of as being 3-4 um, claves so that you can just kind of start for yourself um, thinking, okay, if I'm going to be you know, accompanying somebody in 3-4, I'm going to figure out, I'm going to kind of base it around this sort of a clave. So I think the, the most basic one would be a waltz. And here I'm using these X's to uh, denote rhythms, lower ones usually being bass notes, higher ones being chords, right? So the waltz uh, is this very common pattern of all three beats. And it feels very stable, right? The waltz isn't very jazzy because it doesn't have syncopation. So if I'm playing waltz for Debbie, of course it has waltz in the title, so uh, waltz is a natural thing to think about. It's very lovely. Playing the wrong chord there, it's bothering me, sorry. And you hear that the accompaniment is bass chord, chord, bass chord. The second sort of 3-4 uh, clave, uh, technically probably isn't 3-4 at all, it's dividing the measure in half into kind of a 6-8 sort of a feel. We do this a lot in jazz, even if the piece is marked in 3-4. Um, because this is swinging, right? Actually, it has um, this offbeat to it. And it's the same rhythm, if you think about it, as the Charleston, um, right? One and two and, uh, just in 3-4. So probably mostly we put uh, the bass on beat one, but I, I just wrote these the same because I can imagine going... So 
that's a really good one to know a great uh, comping pattern, a nice place to ba base your, your waltz rhythm. Um, I've sometimes heard this rhythm referred to as the jazz waltz, and I'll show you kind of, I have three A, three and three A. And two and three. Which if, if you've ever, you know, seen my videos on comping, I refer to this rhythm in uh, four four as the reverse Charleston. Beat and one and then beat three. We're just cutting a, uh, we're cutting a quarter note off. So. So this actually has kind of a mirrored three eighth note pattern. And I think it's a little more swinging. on beat two and usually I use this kind of at the end of sections to be kind of a stop or you know a regroup or a little break um, I don't know that I would do this over and over again but just hypothetically It might be, um, something like that, where kind of at the end of a section, I might go on two because accenting the two is kind of so, I don't know, we might say left footed. It's so unusual, um, that, uh, that it kind of signals that something's happening. We actually do this a lot in four, four bossa novas as well at the end of a section. And then for straight eighths, this is a nice pattern where you're playing the bass on the downbeat um, and then chords on all of the offbeats. So, it feels a little bossa nova like E. kind of offbeat feel is another possible clock. So I'm sure that you can think of more than that. You know, we could just do beat one and beat three. But those are some common ones to know. Now, as we found out as I was playing those through, it gets obnoxious to just do the clave over and over again, right? You don't want to be that repetitive really with anything. So one thing that we can do is we can create longer phrases by combining some of these. So for example, here's Number one was the waltz, and number three A was a version of the jazz waltz. So if we, we can go. And now we have a two bar phrase. Two is the six eight just dividing the measure in half, and number five was kind of the board bossy thing. I don't know how this is gonna turn out, it's gonna be a weird Frankenstein thing. So, so I didn't love that, but you see what I mean, hopefully. 
uh, that you know it doesn't have to just stay in one clave. You might want to kind of have something in mind that okay, this is my basis for what I'm doing here, and then you can start combining them. And if I'm actually playing. some other things thrown in there as well, of course. Um, the other really good advice I've gotten from teachers is in th when you are playing in 3-4, if it's not really slow, think about it in 12-8. And I'll show you uh, what uh, my teachers meant, I think. You know, so if we're thinking about waltz, waltz for Debbie, right? Uh, we think about it in 3-4, it's a waltz. One, two, three, four. Instead, we can make each of those measures, uh, well, if we think of each of those quarter notes as eighth notes, all of a sudden now we're thinking about one, two, three, four, and technically the 12 8 would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. slow four, also known as 12-8, versus if I'm thinking one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. It feels less rich. So I hope that some of those tips are helpful um, in terms of thinking in three, four. It's something that I'm still working on. It's so tricky. It's so different than being in four, four. If you enjoyed this, guess what you'll enjoy? You'll enjoy playing solo jazz piano. I know it. I just know it. Order it from my website. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for checking it out. See you later.